orgs have received some nice quality of life. Now there are a few things intrinsic to each frame. For example, a engineering borg can now actually hear and read in the engineering radio as well as science common binary. And they can also speak in it. So a board can actually say hi on the radio and actually communicate with people. You can also directly talk to your department because, I mean, an engineering side board is probably going to be working with engineering. So it makes sense that you can talk and listen to them. Borgs can no longer slip on things. So it makes them a bit more mobile. They have also had their HP increased from 100 to 150, making them quite a lot more durable as well. Borgs do still take structural damage, though. So it only takes two... Fire Axe hits to actually kill a Borg now, but when they die, they don't just explode anymore, and they can take continually more damage on the ground, so they basically have a 150 health uh, crit state now. And inadvertently, since that they have this like crit state now, it actually uh, you can actually repair quite a lot of damage. Uh, I mean, this Borg was literally at 196 damage, and if I check them now, they uh, one use of a welding torch restores all of the damage. So you can pretty much keep Borgs going for a much, much longer time than before, uh, making them quite tanky and very easy to keep running. Borg parts have had their cost reduced across the board. I'm not going to do a comparison of every single one. I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter where the costs were. It matters where they are now. So the Man Machine interface is 10 steel, 2 glass, 5 plastic, 2 gold. The artificial brain is 5 steel, plastic, 1 gold, silver, and plasma, 10 plasma. And... Each of the Borg parts are now cheaper. Uh, I think the endoskeleton is actually the same, but the arms and legs are much cheaper, and the head is cheaper, and the torso is now cheaper as well. So making Borgs has gone quite a bit cheaper. Also, just while I'm here, there is now a basic module unlocked by default for each department. So for example, the engineering Borg has a construction cyborg module for, uh, to start with. There's a service, medical, janitorial and the cargo bot so now without any text you can still at least make basic borgs round start for each of the departments if you have the materials as part of the quality of life update for borgs they now have an access lock so for example this borgs panel is open but i can't interact with it because i don't have an id but for like an engineering borg if i have an engineering id i can unlock it and then interact with the panel just like before so what this does is it makes it so if you don't have the right access you can't just rip out a brain from a borg and that makes them just more resistant to tampering in general quantum fiber weaving is a new tier 3 civilian services technology and researching it will unlock speed boots once you research it you can make them at the proto lathe they are somewhat expensive due to their silver cost but otherwise only use steel and plastic once you get the boots they take power cells which you can just insert uh, I would highly recommend trying to get a high capacity power cell because this drains battery very quickly. So all you do is put them on and on the side of your screen you have an action bar. Once you turn it on there will be tiny green lights on the side that activate but there's no other way of knowing that the boots are actually on. The only thing these do is they increase your movement speed by 25%. They don't stick you to the floric mag boots and they don't prevent you from slipping. The 25% increased movement speed as long as you have power is uh, quite powerful in many scenarios. Directional windows now show their level of damage, so the left is an undamaged window, partially damaged, very damaged, and close to breaking. Well, close-ish to breaking. There's actually like two or three good hits in this with a crowbar, but it's definitely at the point where you would uh, want to fix the window or get away from it. The Shark Minnow is a new salvage mob. It is basically a mini-boss. It's not quite as tough as a dragon, but it's certainly a lot harder than a space carp. They have 180 health. They do 12 slash damage a hit and also do blood loss damage a hit and they are the first mob in the game that can actually heal from drinking blood directly as in they have blood sucker organs which specifically converts blood into brute and burn healing so they can sustain quite a long time in space and they are something that you're probably going to want to try to kill very quickly arachnids can make web shields with 12 silk uh it's not like the strongest thing ever but it does have 20 hp it doesn't have a lot of damage reduction but the, remember the way shields work is that they take 50 percent of incoming damage and the shield has 20 hp so it effectively does protect you a decent bit i mean a decent bit especially for something that you could just make at any time because all you have to do is spin some silk and then you can craft a shield plants no longer grow when they don't have sufficient water and nutrients so if you see the yellow or blue light you're going to want to fulfill those requirements so you can get back to growing your plants Cotton seeds have been added to the Mega Seed Servitor, and this lets you grow, well, 
cotton so that your moth friends on the station can actually have something to eat that isn't your clothing. Puppy Ian has been added to the game. Uh, he's not mechanically any different than the previous Ians, or any different than Lisa, but it's now just a fourth different dog that the Hop will uh, have to protect, and the fourth dog that the Syndicate will have to slaughter. Uh, but yeah, it doesn't do anything mechanically different other than be a, a puppy version of Ian, and, I mean, you can pet him. Local out-of-character chat will now appear above your head as blue, and will also be labeled as L-O-O-C, so people can immediately see that you're not trying to talk in character. And this is really helpful because L-O-O-C used to only be able to be seen in the chat box, so like, sometimes you'd be trying to explain to someone something and they're just not paying attention to their chat box, so it looks like you're just staring at them. So that is a nice update, especially more so for new players. Vending machines will now actually just dispense whatever you click immediately without having to do like the weird double click from before. Basically they're not toggle all options anymore, they're just click buttons if that makes sense. But either way, it just makes vending machines a little more smooth to use. You can no longer infect bees as a zombie, so now you don't get the free 5 pixel death horde that you could before. Uh, I mean, realistically, how would you even zombify a bee by biting it? Like, you, there would be nothing left. But I guess that's the point. Anyways, I'd like you all to thank our maintainers and contributors who keep the game up to date, polished, and just fun to play. And as always, the patch notes will be in the comments down below or in the Steam description. Thank you for watching.